Let's open our Bible to the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. Mm. The Bible reads, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bone. The hand of the Lord was upon me. Now this is a man of God, or this was a man of God, living in the land of the living. But there are mysteries happening around him which he does not know. There are mysteries going on concerning the people he was supposed to lead as a prophet of those days. But in his normal physical form, he doesn't know what is happening. But things are happening. Because the enemy that is plotting, things are happening, it happens in the spirit. And if you, it is only when you get in the spirit that you will know what is happening and you can take authority. So this man was there to prophesy to people. He was raised as a leader, but he does not know what is happening to his people. But the hand of the Lord came upon him and he carried him out in the spirit and he set him down in the midst of the reality of what is happening to his people. There are things that might be happening in your life. You might not be aware. As you are standing here, things might be going on in with your family. You are not aware. It's only when you get in the spirit that God will help you to use the authority that he has given to you to use it effectively. I want you to pray, Lord, in this service. Let your hand come upon me. Carry me in the spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, the eternal rock of ages, I present myself in this service, O Lord. Let your hand come upon me. Let your hand come upon me. Carry me in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Let me experience your hand upon my life. Thank you, Father. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. In the case of Ezekiel, when the hand of the Lord came upon him, he set him in the valley and he saw dry bones. And if you read further, you will realize the Lord told him, these bones are the house of Israel. They said our hope is gone. They said things are not going well. And the Lord began to give him instruction of what to do. Your, your situation might not be the valley, the dry bowl. But your situation might be that you need guidance. You need direction concerning your marriage, concerning your finances, concerning your career. There are things that you do not know, but you need to know it through the spirit of the Lord. For this man, God relate to him according to his assignment and the people that he was created to lead. I want you to pray once more. Lord, as your hand is coming upon me, as your spirit is coming upon me, give me clarity. Give me clarity in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me divine instruction. Give me divine guidance. Give me divine strategy in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, concerning the ministry you have given to me, concerning the marriage, concerning the children, concerning the assignment, open my eyes to see what is happening. Give me guidance, give me strategy, give me divine instruction. Divine instruction, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We honor you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The Lord asked this man concerning his own case and his people. He said, these are dry bones. Son of man, can this bone live? The man said, 
Oh Lord, only you know. And the Lord told him, prophesy. He went on, he said, and I prophesy as I was told. When the Lord speak, it is very important to hear. And to hear clearly. The Lord told him, prophesy. Speak to the bones to come alive. He gave him the divine instruction. This is a time that you need divine instruction. That when the Lord gives to you, you are able to hear clearly and you are able to prophesy according to the word of God. I want you to pray once more. Lord, I am ready. Yes. Holy Spirit, help me to hear what the Lord is saying. In this service, help me to hear divine instruction. As I watch you, as I listen to the ministration, let divine instruction come to me concerning my case, concerning my issue, concerning my affairs. Let divine instruction come. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open my ears, O oh Lord. Holy Spirit, help me to understand when you speak in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We honor you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In verse 7, the man of God says, so I prophesy as I was commanded. I heard the instruction and I did exactly. I prophesy as I was commanded. There are times that we hear the word of God and we are supposed to be doers of the word. But when we get out in the world, Due to pressure, we begin to do something else. The world might twist the instruction. But the guy said, I prophesy as I was commanded. Simply means I obeyed the instruction. The way I am supposed to do it. I want you to pray. Lord, I'm going out here with divine instruction. I shall do as you have asked me to do. I shall obey you 100% and I will get results in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray in this service, I will hear instruction. I will hear divine instruction and I will go and be a doer of the word. I shall do according to what Thank you, King of Glory. We bless you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Father, we commit this service into your hand. Yes, Lord. Have your way. Yes, we are ready to hear from you. Yes. And we pray by divine visitation and the manifestation of the presence of God, we will not go home the same. Every question represented here shall go home with the right answer. Amen. In this month of victory, every area we are struggling with will receive total victory. Amen. And we will go home with songs of victory. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of Princess Kathy, can you come and welcome us all this morning? Let's put our hands together as she's coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this Amen. morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Uh, please join me as I celebrate and salute my parents in the Lord. <laughs> Apostle and Prophetess Batmos, uh, we thank God for your lives, hallelujah. Amen. And we are really joyful of what God is doing in our lives through you. Amen, Amen. hallelujah. Amen. So I want to welcome you to the house of the Lord this morning. 
This is Abundant Life Ministries, hallelujah. Amen. And we have a vision to declare the order of God in the lives of his people. Amen. Now that is taken from the book of John chapter 10, verses 10, that says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But thank God the story did not end there. The word of God says, and this is Jesus speaking, he said, but I have come so that you may have life and have it in abundance, hence Abundant Life Ministries, hallelujah. So we have a mission to teach and to preach the unadulterated word of God. We are here to evangelize, to make disciples and to plant churches and we are a haven for families, hallelujah. We also have uh, values that are clearly written on our banner, so please do familiarize yourself during the service and on that note, I would want to ask if there is anybody who's visiting us for the very first time. Is there anyone who's, oh, we have a visitor. Can I please ask the <laughs> Hallelujah. Welcome to the house of the Lord. We are glad to have you this morning. We are blessed with your presence. Hallelujah. And we want to believe that. God will meet you at the point of your need this morning. Hallelujah. And on that note, royals, I want to welcome all of you in the house of the Lord, all the royals. Please also allow me to welcome and appreciate Apostle Caleb in our midst and Elder. You are welcome. always a blessing to have you amongst us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And all our online visitors, you are also welcome. And all our online first time visitors, we also welcome you. And my lady, can I just ask that you stand again? The Asha is going to give you a little card where you are going to write down your information. We just want to check up on you. We want to pray with you and for you. Hallelujah. So on that note, royals, please let us stand on our feet as we welcome mm -hmm. each other in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go around and just welcome each other. Welcome your neighbor to the house of the Lord. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. Welcome someone. Welcome someone. Say thank you for coming to the house of the Lord. Greet someone this morning. Tell them it's good to see you. It's good to see you. Tell someone it's good to see you. Oh, thank you for coming. May you really be blessed. Why they are princes and princesses. Hallelujah. So when you 
see them, don't, don't, don't be ashamed to call them Princess Kathy or Princess Tumi or Princess Michelle. That's who they are. They are in the palace. Hallelujah. And, and if you decide to be part of us, you are a royal priesthood. And you are a royal princess and a royal prince. Hallelujah. That's where the name Royal Assembly is coming from. Are we together? Hallelujah. Now some of you uh, came a little bit later than the usual time and maybe you feel a little bit disoriented as to you know, have we started? What is happening? So I want you again to go to someone and welcome them and say, let's praise the Lord. We are here to praise the Lord. Tell someone we are here for only one thing, to praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
and she's back in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Also help me to appreciate our Father in the Lord.
Psalm 119, verse 130. Verse 119, verse 130. The Bible says, The entrance of your words, not word, words, plural. And this morning we pray, Lord, let your hand come upon me. Take me up in the spirit and give me instructions. And it says, the entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the sinner. So it's possible for the words in different dimensions in multiple layers to come. If the door is not open, it will not enter. And we are talking about the heart. We're talking about the spirit to be open to the word of God. Mm. God wants to give somebody divine instruction. God wants to give victory to somebody today. And I want you to pray, Lord, I open my heart. I take my mind away from every distraction. I empty myself and I pray that your words will find a place of entrance and manifestation in my life today in this service. In the name of Jesus, just talk to God as the only spirit to help you. Era to la base telebo, rika yanda kalebosia. Father, I avail myself. Let the entrance of your word be made possible. My heart is open. My spirit is ready to receive directly from you every word, instruction. If it's a rebuke, I take it. If it is correction, I take it. If it's edification, I take it. I refuse to come with a sifter to sift your word. I receive all instruction coming for me. I refuse to listen for my neighbor. I shall receive for myself. Kalibak. I shall not block out your word. I shall not block out for your word. I pray that my mind is clear. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. And I pray as the word is coming, according to your word, it will give understanding. It will give understanding. And I declare, you are going home with a clear understanding. You will understand why you are going through what you are going through. You will understand your season. You will understand your position. You will understand the battle. You will understand the anointing that God has released upon your life. You will understand your purpose in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Somebody shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Please you may be seated in the presence of God. Your Father. What a worship. What a worship. What a worship. I believe somebody is going home with something unique today. Amen. God is doing something great and something mighty in our lives. So this morning, I welcome you all. Please help me welcome your neighbor once more. Welcome your neighbor. Uh, remind your neighbor we are ready to receive from the Lord. Uh, encourage your neighbor. Don't listen to the enemy. Uh, uh, forget about what you left at home. Uh. Uh, with God, all things are possible. Uh, with God, all things are possible. Uh, let's be in the here and now. Operate in the here and now. Maybe before you left, you realize, oh, how am I going to make it to work tomorrow? Uh, what will I eat when I go back? Or that project? What? What? Just leave everything. Be here and 
and now. Because in the presence of God, there is what? Fullness of joy. Amen. So we are glad to have each and every one of you with us here, those who are here in the house and those who are online. To our first time visitors, we once again say welcome. Uh, we are excited that you have chosen to be with us today. Amen. And I also want to congratulate those uh, who gave their life last week and those in the previous week. God bless you. Help me celebrate them. Uh, celebrate them. Hallelujah. Uh, and uh, we will walk the journey. We will walk the journey. And uh, at the end of the service, those who the evangelism team, please gather them. I just want to have a quick word with them. Those because I didn't have time last week and the previous week. Those who gave their life to Christ, we just uh, wait. Just remain just for a few minutes. I know where people are having. You can quickly just go uh, logistics where. To help out. You can just quickly go have your coffee, then you come and meet us here. So we fellowship together. Amen. Is that fine? Amen. Hallelujah. So for those who are joining us online, Angola, Namibia, Canada, Nigeria, everywhere you are, God bless you. God bless you. Those who are in Ventuk, I pray that God will make it possible you will join us next week. Amen. And all the royals, you are welcome. Amen. Yeah, thank you for those who came to to, to join who joined the program of prayer yesterday morning, and those who came to set up. God bless you. I was not here, and the uh, the body was undergoing certain um, certain certainty. No. <laughs> but thank you for all those who prayed. Yeah, for those who prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God. Okay, to the microphone. Amen. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. I think there is still a loud volume. You can go down. Say number four. Oh, I preach with my, my. Hallelujah. Amen. I think it's much better this way. Yeah. Don't worry. We will soon send our logistic to a training school, maybe in America. <laughs> yeah, we, we will send them. Yeah, but they are doing a good work with them. Please help me celebrate them. Yeah. And also the worship team. Appreciate them. Yeah. And also help me appreciate prophetess for the good work she's doing. Amen. And once again help us to welcome. Our men of God who are seated here, the apostles that will come to you. Amen. We love to, to have you. Yeah, he's been very busy, crazily busy, but as we've not had enough time to, and I'm sure they'll be wondering what happened to Apostle this time. Yeah, he's very scarce, but don't worry, just give. Yeah. Why we thought we are finishing another assignment just coming and but we thank God. I, I pray that it will get to a point when we say we are in full-time ministry, we will really do full-time ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, those who understand, we understand. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's go to the word of God. We, God has been good to us. We are still in our month of uh, victory. victory. Let's go to the word of God. Please open your Bible to the book of First Samuel chapter 17. It's a popular story. And kingdom kids, oh my, my, my. Kingdom kids, can you just rise or go with your teacher to, to your class? Yeah. I see Marvelous is the first. Yeah. She has graduated to the class of kingdom kids. I don't know. It's grace zero, zero, zero. <laughs> Yeah, God bless you. So you can tell me what you learn after the service, but one day there is now. It's one good thing to us is the same message you pre we preach here. 
So just for the parents to know, the same message we preach here is the same message they are having there. So we, we are having the same thing. So after the service, when you get home, it's always good as family to sit down, ask them what they learn, they will share with you from their understanding. So for every message we have, we break it down to their own level. And uh, because we are preparing them for the future. Amen. So um, those who are intercessors, you must intercess. Intercede for me to be able to deliver the word. Yeah. The Lord is my strength. Thank you. Amen. So let's go to the scripture. First Samuel chapter 17. It's a long version of scripture or chapter, but we will be reading and we will be jumping. Today we won't be able to focus on all. But let's start from verse 1. Are you there? Can I hear your amen? amen? Now the Philistines gathered their armies to the battle. And we are gathered to Soko, which belongs to Judah. They are camped between Soko and Aseka in Ephes Dami. Hmm. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and they encamped in the valley of Elah and drew up in battle array against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on the mountain on one side and Israel stood on mountain on the other side with a valley between them. Verse 4, And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from God, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head and he was hung with a coat of, ma of mail and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekel of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his leg and a bronze javelin between his shoulder. Now the staff of the spear was like a weaver's beam and his iron speared weighed 600 shekels and a shield bearer went before him. Verse 8. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And you, the servant of Saul, chose a man for yourself and let them come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servant. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servant and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all the all Israel heard this word of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Let's jump to verse 44. And the Philistines said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistines, You come to me with a sword and a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the army of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give carcass of the camp of the Philistine to the best of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know there is a God in Israel. Verse 47 then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear. Amen. For the battle is the Lord and he will give you into our hands. Father bless the reading of this word. As we prepare to hear your word, we ask for your presence to fill this place. Open our hearts and minds to receive your truth. Let your spirit move freely among us. Oh Lord, I pray that you anoint my lips to speak your message with power and clarity. 
May your word that is coming out transform us. May it strengthen our faith. We bind any spirit of fear and doubt. We call all mind to come to the obedience of God of Christ and what we come against any wandering of our mind in the name of Jesus. Thank you for what you are about to do. We give you all the glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. So as we continue in our month of victory I will be sharing with you this message from the Lord Claiming the victory that God has given to you. Claiming the victory that God has given to you. Mm. At this point, we know that we are always in battle. The enemy will always try to rear, rear up his head. But we know that victory is ours. Because Jesus died on the cross. God in his word said he has given us dominion over the earth. And uh, just as God anointed David to be king, we have been anointed to walk in victory. We have been set apart to walk in victory. We have been chosen to do what? To walk in victory. However, for you to get the victory, it requires you to play your part. Uh, I know we can be very spiritual and say, I've got to do nothing because Jesus has finished the work. In fact, Jesus said, it is finished. It means he has done anything and that is so true. However, you need to understand that when God created this earth, he gave us dominion. So the earth is yours. I am here. It's only when you invite me that I will come to do what you ask me to do. That is why you see most of the time when God wants to move, he always gave, he gave instruction. Mm. I remember during the bad days, somebody bought for me a gift voucher. And they loaded some handsome money on the card. It's for which one? Maruamo. And the card says, anything you want in this mall, in whatever shop, according to the value of that card, it is yours. So this person has blessed me with whatever is my desire. And I have the card in my hand. But the owners of the shop will not call me. They will never come to knock on my door and say, excuse me, what do you want? Because you have the card. They are not going to do that. The bank that released the card for you to spend even if they check on their ledger and they see that the amount is still in credit they will not give you a call and say excuse me we see that on that card you have no spending they will just assume you are not ready for it so I can be hungry at home with the card in my pocket and the only one who gave me the card will not expect me to be hungry. And I say, I don't have a shoe. And the person who gave me believes you are expected to have a shoe. So imagine if you are the one who gave me that card with that handsome money. And apostle is walking in town with a torn shoe. You will look at me. Is this man so stupid? Didn't I give him a card loaded with money? So God has given us victory. The victory is there. It requires for us to do what we need to do to claim the victory. Yes. And to claim this victory, to borrow from the message of women on the threshing floor Friday, 
you need to step out in faith. Oh, yeah. And stepping out in faith requires you to do something. Are we together? So we have children of God who are sitting in defeat. Who are complaining about things that is not working. Children of God who are supposed to be walking in victory. But they are singing the song of defeat. Why? Because they are not doing something. Mm, they are not doing something. And that shall not be our portion. If you have been operating in an avenue where you are not supposed to be, the hand of God will take you to where you are supposed to be in the name of Jesus. So today we want to explore this powerful story narrative about David, the Israelite and Goliath. See, the, the account of this story is not just a story. It is a spiritual lesson that teaches us that we need to step out in faith to claim the victory that belongs to us. The victory that God has really given to us. Now, when the enemy comes, because the enemy will always come. And one thing I've learned is there is no prayer you can pray on earth now why Jesus has not come that can stop the enemy from operating? Are you with me? There is no prayer. That prayer will not be answered. He said, I rise up in the name of Jesus. I stop the enemy. I stop the devil to do what he's doing all over the world. That prayer will not be answered. <coughs> Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4, it says the prince of this world. So he is doing what he is called to do. And God is doing what he knows how to do. God is a good God. And the devil is a bad devil. He will always do. But we have the power to stop the manifestation of his activity in our life and in our environment. Just like you can't stop the birds of the air from flying over your head, but you can stop it from making a nest over your head. The devil will continue to do what he's doing, but you can restrict the manifestation of it. I say, hey, you, you will continue to do what you want to do there. Yeah. But here, you will not manifest. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, in this scripture, we begin to see the enemy and his strategy. Let's quickly talk about the strategy of the enemy. Because winning battle is about strategy. Yeah. Even life is about strategy. When God created heaven and earth, he was, he strategically created everything. He didn't start with man. He started with heaven and earth. He planted everything and he strategically placed man on earth. Are you with me? Amen. If you go to a battle with that strategy, uh, you will lose so beautifully. You go into a game without a plan, you will lose so handsomely. So winning battle is about strategy. So the enemy always comes with a strategy. Let us see his strategy. In verse 8 to 10, you will see his strategy as he began to speak. And when he was speaking, he was speaking so loud that everybody who cares to listen will listen. Even if you don't care to listen, you must listen. And what did he say? Please say, can you quickly read for me? Verse 8 to 10. Mm. Verse 8. 
Yes. First Samuel 17. Okay. First Samuel verses 17 verses 8. Uh huh. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, mm -hmm. Why are you out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Am I reading the correct one? Yes, you are reading. Okay. Choose you a man for you. Uh -huh. and let him come down to me. Uh -huh. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servant. Your servant. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servant uh -huh. and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Okay, stop there. You see, what he was doing is to, if a man comes to you and say, I challenge you, if you defeat me, winner takes all. It means he's so sure of himself. It means he has been defeating people and he has sized you up and he has seen from what I see, ah, this one is a mismatch. I will destroy this one. So it will make life easy. Say, just give me man. He has checked from the king to the captain of the army to everyone. Say, this one. I will just finish this. So let me make it easy for all of us. You come for your defeat. And winner takes all. And amazingly, Goliath and the Philistine did not wait for them to come to their territory. The Bible said they went to a land that belongs to Judah. So when the enemy comes to attack, he brings the battle to your doorstep. That is why you see when he attacks. So most of the time when you want to attack, you are the one that has been chosen to be the prayer warrior. I know you have been anointed to pray your family through to the next level. So what he will do is not he will leave you. He will look for somebody in your family who will easily get into trouble. Because when they get into trouble, you will be disturbed and you will not be able to play to pray. So he is after your focus, but he will not come to you. He is after your faith, but he will not come to you. He knows you love your family. So all he will do, he will look for somebody who will just open the door. So you will realize you, why are you doing this today? Tomorrow you say, I'm going on a five day fast. I want to intercede for my family. But the enemy has brought the battle to your family. And he will arrest someone and they will say, this person is in the hospital. So you don't even have time to pray. And you will go there to look for food to take for this person in the Hospital. So the enemy, the, the Goliath said, You know what? I am the one who have been given, I am the champion here. And these people, we're going to defeat them. So he asked them, You know what? Bring somebody to come and challenge me. So there is a giant in your family. So he, he is calling, Bring someone. Actually, it's after that prayer warrior who will come. But he knows he has paralyzed everybody. So even if you come, you are coming with a clouded mind. There is no way you can confront him. And he did all this to paralyze their confidence. He did all this to instill fear. While they are still sitting, they cannot think straight. All they were doing, they were looking at the size of the Giant. They were looking at the armor of the giant. Then in, 
Then many years ago, I belonged to a group, it's a choir group. So we were invited to a function. So we took our instruments, and this instrument we are very old. Yeah. It, it was just a Lord help me kind of instrument. <laughs> <laughs> we went. So at the function, at one end there, then they say from from the stage where we came. We were here, then there's this other choir group, they were on the other hand. And they said, they will give us time, you know, we will be, be sharing. Yeah. So this guy, when they set up the instrument, it was state of the heart. <laughs> we were telling each other, because you will even see from the instrument, you will see even the keyboard, you will have to support the stand with the stone, you will have to, you know. Ah, when we told our choir master, say, hey, look at our mixer. How are we going to survive it? Look at those guys. So, they ask those guys to start first. You will hear the quality. All of us left, we went, we were checking. At that point, we were already paralyzed. Yeah. When the guys finished, they asked us to play. We said, hey, you play. We play one, two. We were already defeated. So we said, oh, they came to us, said, just use what you have. Yeah. And amazingly, the singers and the people who play the instrument, we are better than these guys. So somebody encouraged us. So in shame, you carry the guitar, you carry the guitar up like this. When we began to minister, everybody were looking and we were saying, if this guy have good instrument, they will do well. Amen. But with what they have, they were producing. And before I could lift up my eyes, those guys were rallying around us. They were not interested in the instrument. They were moved by the skill that our team we are displaying. So Goliath came, he advertised himself. He showed everything and he paralyzed the people. And when the enemy comes like that, he will show you the people who has destroyed. And many of us, we are falling into this hand of the enemy. And you will see the effect in verse 11. The impact of the strategy of Goliath. In verse 11, when they hear his word, the king and the Israelites, in fact he said, all the Israelites, they were terrified. They were afraid. Why? Because of the sound of Goliath. <laughs> Don't lift up your hand. Have you been afflicted with the type of sickness and you go online, you begin to read about the sickness. Yeah? I don't, let me, I don't want to expose you, but uh, let's talk to one more. Yeah? You feel that and you go online. And you begin to read. And it's very brutal. And it begins to tell you the terrible things. And uh, the moment you are reading, you are now afraid. Hey, maybe I have this. You begin to label yourself. At that point, Goliath has got you where he wants you to be. Ordinary simple cough because some grain of rice went to hey I read it. Google Goliath said it. Then we begin to panic. We begin to do this. And you begin to label yourself for what you don't have. So the king the soldier, captain, with all their trainings, 
they were paralyzed with fear. They have forgotten that God is on their side. They have forgotten whose they were. Instead of seeing the Goliath as an enemy that has already been defeated, they were seeing Goliath as one that is even bigger than the God they have. And what the enemy does is strategies to make you forget. Forgetfulness is one of these elements he use because when you forget, you operate like an ordinary person. You forget that. Imagine forgetting that you have money in your pocket. You will go hungry unnecessarily. Forgetting that you have a skill to tackle certain problem. Yeah. It will make you live in defeat. But may that not be our portion. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. When Goliath come, we will always see the effect of his strategy in the way we react. Yeah. It will affect your prayer. Your prayer will not be the prayer of one who is in defeat. And as children of God, knowing that we have victory, when we pray, we should pray from the pray place of victory, not from the place of defeat. Amen. Amen. So the question is, what is that Goliath in your life? For different people, Goliath might represent different things. For some, the giant, Goliath might be fear. Fear of failure. Taking the bold step in using the gift God has given to you. For some, that fear is speaking the truth where you are supposed to speak the truth. For some, is the fear of the unknown. Go here, I don't want to because I don't know what will happen. Why have you not started this? There have met many children of God who are complaining. Hey, my, I hate my job. You wake up in the morning. You are not happy with the job. You are not happy with your boss. You are not happy with what you are doing. But you are skilled. Then somebody will tell you, why don't you start something? But fear of the unknown we keep you where you are. You rather endure. You are the star of that company. And you forget that that company was started by somebody from scratch. But you believe, hey, if I go, that salary they give to me, hey, how will I pay electricity? How will I pay this salary? And you forget that that salary is even a prison itself. I'm not saying to all, but so for many. It's a prison. You have in your mind, I want to start this. But the fear of the unknown. Fear of failure. Fear of what if I don't make it. If everybody has thought or have been thinking like that, you will not see all the success story you see. For some, it's fear of obeying what God asks you to do. Go and ask for forgiveness. Ah, they will reject me. Fear of rejection. I don't want them to make fun of me. Because when I fought, I was, my shoulder was like anger like this. But later you have dealt with me, I'm wrong. How will I? Hey, when I go to prophet, I say, prophetess, forgive me. They will laugh at me. Rather let them laugh at you and you enter your destiny. Than allow Goliath to keep you where you are. Because where you are, you are not moving. And God is telling you the solution to your problem is to ask for forgiveness. You are now allowing the flesh to stand in your way. Remember, we are in the year of the spirit. For as many that are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. Serving God with all your heart. But the fear if I obey God, what will the nation say? Who cares about the nation? Who gave you the bread? Who made you to wake up this morning? I 
And I've seen people who are afraid of what people will say rather than obeying God. At the end of the day, you will realize people are not even thinking about you. A man once wrote, he said, when I was 20 years, I was worried about what people say about me. When I get to 30, I told myself, I choose not to listen to what people will say about me. When he was 50, he said, I told myself, what people say about me does not matter. I will counter it. I will prepare my response. But when he got to the age of 60, he realized nobody has actually been talking about him. <laughs> he has wasted in time thinking about people. Let me pause here and tell someone who you, you, you are concerned about what people do, what they say, what they have. They didn't greet me. I greeted them. They don't answer. Hey, don't make other people's behavior personal. If you meet people in town, you greet them, they don't answer. Don't make it personal. You don't know whether this person burned the last cup of rice they cook at home and they are thinking, Lord, where will you provide? You say good morning. They are not even hearing you. They are talking to your father. If they don't greet you, why don't you ask? Eh, brother Solo, I greeted you yesterday. You did not answer. Say, ah, sorry, I didn't see you. We, we have been robbed in these lies of the enemy. That uh, I greeted, they didn't greet me. And one of the things that the children of God we need to, 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 to repent for, we were. I posted, they didn't say click like on my post. It was my birthday, they didn't say happy birthday. When our social media become the form of communication that we are getting angry and we are catching feelings. Somebody called me a man of God. Yeah, you have distanced yourself. I say, ah, yeah, everything I post, you don't, you don't click like, you don't share. I say, if I don't click like, why don't you click like on my own? Yeah. Some of us we don't have that luxury of time. Yeah. In my house, they will say, yeah, daddy, did you see my WhatsApp status? They say, what is that? Remind me again. Oh, it's, it's let us. You, you, you have that thing on. Prophet there will say, I posted something there you did not check. Don't make it personal. <laughs> Some of us are BBC. We were born before computers. Don't make it personal. Okay, let's come back to the message. I believe somebody is getting deliverance today. The Lord wants to do it. People stop talking to each other. Yeah, I, I, I posted, it did not pull, it did not come in, it did not click, so I will also not click like, I will also not share, I will not, uh, hey. if I post and you don't come in, why can't I call you, I posted something I want you to do. Yeah. 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 If you want to become a content creator to make money, then speak to people to help you. May the Lord help us. Amen. For some, the, 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 the Goliath might be addition, shall be a destructive habit. And it has come and it tells you, you can't get out of this. Yeah. And whatever form the giant comes, yeah. his aim is to stop you from claiming the victory God has given. Then we, we, we ask, okay, why is it that the enemy is coming every day? Why? What is the aim of the enemy? When you read the scripture, the children of Israel are always in battle. Amen. David fought throughout his life. Every time he's battled, the Philistines, the Amorites, the Jebus, are, they are always fighting. Why? Yeah. The answer is simple. It's because of the land. Somebody say the land. Every enemy of your life is after the land. And when you talk about land, it goes beyond the physical land we're talking about. The land 
signify or symbolize blessing and prosperity. When the Lord talks about land, spiritually he talks about blessing and prosperity which the Lord has given to you. The land represents for some a physical place of habitation that God has released to you. On a deeper level, the land represents our spiritual inheritance in Christ. The land also represents rest and restoration that God has given to you. That is the land. And you know, that is why God is very interested in the land. That's why he told the people, if my people, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, 5, 14, if my people who are called by my name, we humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will hear Amen. their life. Amen. God is the one that gives land. Psalm 85 verse 2 said, the Lord will give what is good and our land will yield this increase. Everything that God has given to you is a land in one form or one dimension. And the enemy is after it. And that's why God said in Deuteronomy 28 verse 12, he said, I will open the windows of heaven and I will send rain on your land. So the enemy wants to take away your land. He wants to rob you of your spiritual inheritance. He wants to rob you of your peace, your joy. He wants to rob you of your standing in Christ Jesus. He wants to tamper with your relationship. So the battle you need to know is not about physical territory. It is about spiritual dominion. But we need to stop the giant. We need to stop the giant. The stall and and the Israelites and the army were paralyzed by the fear that Goliath inflicted on them. Amen. But you need to tell yourself, I refuse Amen. to be like them. Amen. So what do you do to claim the victory that God has for you? You have to be like David. The answer to do that lies in what David did. So David, a young shepherd boy, came on the scene. And from the account of the story, he was just on an error. Yeah. But when he got there, he also heard the same thing the people we are hearing. Yeah. The same thing they heard that made them to be paralyzed in fear was the same thing that David heard. But David was not afraid. Yeah. Why? Because he knew the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not run. Even though I walk in the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no so then he said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Yeah. That is defying the army of the Lord. He said, I will fight. Now, when Goliath invited them, these people came to fight as a unit. But what did he do? He told them, Don't come as a unit. Come. Alone. Yeah. That was his best strategy. Because we know one, chase a thousand. Two, chase tens of thousands. So many people, when they are confronted with Goliath, I will tell you, come out alone and fight me alone. And we will go and fight in our own self, in our own intellect, in our own knowledge, in our own power. And when we check our power, we check all the instruments we have, we realize we can stand no chance against Goliath. So Goliath told them, I am bringing the order here. And in the first place, how dare you suggest to the chosen of the Lord how to fight the battle? So he said, don't come as a unit. Send just one man. And they began to consider the suggestion of Goliath. That was where fear entered. Because they checked the king. Saw so himself, me, this man. Uh -uh. Captain, what about you? Say, uh-uh. Not me. He got this one. Ah, near, 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 near. 
No, not me. So they began to consider because they want to go alone. Yeah. But David, when he came, he realized, I am not alone. Yeah. I've got the Father with me. I've got hosts of angels with me. That's why he told Goliath, you come with me with a sword and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. So, Goliath began to curse David. And when Goliath saw something on him, if you read that scripture, he said, am I a dog? In the heart of David, he said, ah, you've given me the victory, you make it easy. Because he called himself a dog. Yeah. So in the mind of David, I'm going to kill this dog. Yeah. Goliath unknowingly discounted himself. Yeah. You see, when you rise up yeah. in the power of the Lord, the enemy will begin to discount himself. Yeah. So he said, am I a dog? So automatically, everyone responded, you are now a dog. Because you said it. As a man speaking, so is he. So David changed the dynamics. He was trying to curse David with his God. And David began to speak in the name of the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. David stepped out in faith. He refused to be afraid. So if you are going to claim your victory that God has given to you, you need to step out in faith. Yes, you need to know your God. Yes. You need to know who your God is. You need to be able to speak out openly. Yes. You need to be able to make declaration about your God. Yes. And when you study this scripture, there are so many lessons there, but I'm just sharing a few. David knew who he was. And he knows that he is a servant of the living God. He knows he has been anointed. Say, though I was anointed to be king, I might not be king yet, but the anointing needs to work for me, for something, for something. And this anointing will help me to defeat this giant. What is that giant in your life? You need to step out in faith. Claim your victory, not just for yourself, but for your family. Do I have someone who is saying I'm rising up to confront the giant? Do I have someone who says I refuse to be intimidated by the giant? Do I have somebody who says I am going to walk in the victory that God has given to me? Do I have somebody who says I refuse to be paralyzed? I refuse to allow the eyes of the enemy to put me down? Do I have somebody who says I am standing up? And I'm getting the victory that God has given to me. Because if you don't go, nobody will go for you. If you don't go, the angels will not come down. If you don't go, Jesus will not come down. You need to go in that power that God has given to you. Remember your identity in God. David knew who he was. He knew I'm a child of God. He knew I speak to God and he hears me. And he said, if he can do it for the bear, if he can do it for the lion, how much more this dog? <laughs> One of the things I like about Goliath is that he went with the end in mind. He already saw himself defeating the giant. He said this, today I will cut off your head. At that point, David had no sword. But his David had no sword. But he said, I will cut your head. Because he has already seen the man slay. He has seen that I will use your own sword to cut. You must go with the end in mind from the beginning. Remember, Saul gave him his sword. He said, I don't want. I'm just going with this thing. I'm just going to use this thing, the, 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 this gift God has given to me. I know. I know how to use this thing. 
If I cannot miss the bed, how much more your big head? It will make it easier. It makes it easier. It makes it easier. So when he was talking, he said, I will cut off your head. I believe people around will say, but David, where is this sword? But David was a man of the spirit. He has gone ahead. He has seen that I will use your own resources to destroy you. As God asked you to do something and you are afraid to stand up, I need to tell you, you need to see the end from the beginning. That's why when people are telling you, the land that we are getting, they are asking, when you check the account, there is nothing there, but I already see it finished. I already see it being inaugurated. I already see the resources of the nation being used to do the work of God. You, 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 that is a message for another day. Operating in the winner's mentality. You can't go with God to a battle and be doing calculation. It's going to fail you. What is the task to kill the giant? What is the task ahead to get back the land? I'm going with God. Amen. And God will tell you. God will tell you. Use the gift I have given to you. You have the gift. And there are so many weapons. Weapons of warfare. That's why you need to communicate with God. Lord. Is it fasting? Is it prayers of so many days? Is it the blood of Jesus? Is it worship? What is it? The Holy Spirit will tell you. So if you are going to claim the victory God has for you, your channel of communication must be open. You must hear from God. Because if David did not hear from God, he would have used the armor of Saul. But David said, excuse me, sir. You have this armor and you could not fight it. If it did not work for you, why are you giving it to me? Let me rather stick to what is working for me. I'm telling you, you are not empty. No matter how big the giant is, there is something in you that can defeat that giant. Is it in your study? You, you, you know in school, those of you who went to school, there are some modules that looks like giants. When you start and the lecturer come and they show you all the money, everything, say, hey, me and calculation. Go with God. Amen. Confront that giant and you shall graduate. Is it business? It looks like it will not make it. But I am telling you, go with God. There is something in you that God has given you. You will surely bring that giant down. The giant will not take your land. You will get back your land. You will possess your land. You will sing the song of victory. You will celebrate to the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And it is not just about you. That victory is for your family. That victory is for your generation. You are getting back the land in the name of Jesus. So the enemy will always come after this family. And I know he will come. He will come to whisper to you. He will tell you, those things you hear there, do you think it's for you? Ah, don't worry. But you know what? Just as David did, when the enemy told him, I'm going to kill you, he said, no way. I've got God on my side. I'm going to kill you. So the enemy will come to some of you. He will tell you you can't come out of that problem. He will tell you that company, that, that problem is permanent. You need to respond with the word of God. Isaiah 49 verse 25. Tell the devil, God says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be set free. If the enemy tells you that you are not good enough, tell the devil, Psalm 139 verse 14, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. For a day just as this, so I can destroy.
destroy you. If the enemy come to you, that God has abandoned you and you, you will not make it. Say, God has abandoned you in the place of your need. You need to counter it. Amen. You need to speak up. Hallelujah. Thank you. You need to tell the devil, 2 Corinthians 5.17, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away and all things have become new. If the enemy tells you you can't get out of that addiction, you fell into sin, you will still fall again. You can't get out of that addiction. Tell him, I have given life to Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. If the enemy tells you you are all alone, no one cares about you. Look at the devil, eyeball to eyeball. Tell the devil, you are a liar. Uh, I am passing all my cares on him because my God cares for me. Amen. And if he tells you you are hopeless, this situation cannot be changed because the doctor has told you it cannot be changed. You cannot get your healing. You cannot get your promotion. And he look tell you, all the people that have failed, I want you to tell the devil, Matthew 19, 26, uh, with God, uh, all things are possible. Amen. You must learn to open your mouth. Learn to open your mouth, and you are able. You will only be able to open your mouth to speak the right word if you spend your time in this world, Amen. not on TikTok, oh, yeah. not on WhatsApp, yeah. on the word. The word. The word. I know you can read your Bible on your cell phone, <laughs> ah, but there are so many dangers. Your battery can die upon you. Amen. While you are reading, the message will pop in. It will cause distraction. Read from the hard word of God. And you know what? Personally, I found in my life that even in the dream, the enemy will come. I am able to respond with the word of God in the dream. You know, because your body will sleep. When you read the word, your spirit should never sleep. Because the enemy will come in the third dimension. When you find yourself waking up, hey, I say, why did you shout in the dream? Why did, hey, I've got this terrible nightmare. Eh. You need to press more in the word. Because there is a level you get to that when you are confronted with the enemy, even in your dream, you will respond with the word of God that is shut down in your bones. But if you are not yet there, you wake up. Before you start saying, hey, 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 go to the word of God and begin to declare the word of God. Don't let yourself, your mind and your spirit put, be pushed to a corner where you are afraid of what you see in the dream. They are all mirage. Victory is yours. The enemy might come and show you, hey, the, the car hit you and you see your body in pieces. It's a lie. You are in Christ. Rise up and begin to cancel every agenda of the enemy. And my prayer for you today is that you'll be able to rise up to claim your land. You will be able to rise up to speak the truth. You will be able to rise up to operate the power that God has given to you. If there is anything confronting you today and it seems answer is not coming, I come in the name of the Lord to tell you you are walking out of here with your answer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare this service and an answer dispensing this in the name of Jesus. The answer to your questions is hereby released to you. The answer to your questions is hereby released to you in the name of Jesus. This time next week. Actually in the next seven days I declare According to the word of God. 
certain perfection is taking place in your life that will confirm to you that you are indeed in the month of victory. Thank you, Jesus. As I'm praying, I see I see thread that is tangled. Is tangled. You know when the thread is tangled? And I see the hand of the Lord is removing it. It's untangling it. And I'm asking, Lord, what are you saying? He's saying every difficult situation, every difficult issue, everything that seems difficult, you are getting an answer. Ways is being made for you in the wilderness. You are getting a way out. You shall possess your land. Your land will not be taken away from you. In the name of Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. I think you can do better than that. Can I give you a minute? Can you stand on your feet? Thank God. Thank God for answers to your prayers. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for what he is doing. Go ahead and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That button was never mine. That button is the Lord. Lord has said to us, I am giving you victory. Oh, thank God. Take a minute and thank God. Thank God. This is the day of victory. This is the day of answers to your prayers. and to hear what the Lord is saying. It, it is always, always, I get so many revelations just by sitting and listening to what God is saying through you. So may the Lord bless you, men of God. May the Lord honor you. May the Lord continually enlarge your territory. Mm, may the blessings of the Lord be seen upon your life in the name of Jesus. We have come to the end of this service. 
Just quick announcements. Next week, Sunday, the 18th of August, we are coming for the grand finale of the strategic prayer meeting. This is the end, the last one for this year. So next week, Sunday, we will have the Sunday service in the morning. We go home and then we come back 6 o'clock in the afternoon next week, Sunday, for the strategic prayer meeting. There are so many testimonies that are coming from the strategic prayer meeting. So I invite you all, it's open to anyone and everyone. Next week, Sunday, we will have that service here. And then uh, on Friday, I announced on Women on the Threshing Floor that we will have the the, 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 the face-to-face -face meeting of women on the threshing floor on Friday the 23rd. Just a quick change, it will be on Saturday. Saturday the 24th of August, we are gathering for the semi-finale of this year. The grand finale will take place in October as we round off with women on the threshing floor. We always close in October because November is our month of EFP. So we are coming together on Saturday the 24th of August here 10 o'clock for the semi-finale of Women on the Threshing Floor and it is the month of Step Out in Faith. So we are coming together. Invite everyone, your colleagues, your friends, let us all come together on that Saturday. And also, you might have seen the flyers, you might have seen it already on Facebook and on, 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 on the platforms of, of the Royal Children. Our annual conference is taking place on the 28th and the 29th of September. This is our 16th annual conference that is taking place here in Ventuk. It will be here at the Royal House now. Saturday evening, we start at 6 o'clock. That is day one of the conference. And then uh, Sunday morning is our 16th anniversary celebration taking place also here. Everyone, all of you are invited to the conference. Saturday morning, we will have the graduation of our uh, uh, School of Ministry students at Mercury Hotel, former Safari Hotel, um, as we celebrate those who have been doing their uh, um, School of Ministry this year. So the, the conference will start in the evening here, 6 o'clock, and then it will, it will continue to Sunday as well. Also, we will be uh, welcoming our new members to Abundant Life Ministries Royal Assembly during the conference. So if you have been visiting us for some time and you feel this is where you belong, this is where you want to be uh, and you want to solidify your relationship with us, uh, the forms are right there at the back. Uh, on your way out, you can just pick up a form there that is the membership application form so that we know uh, are, are we together where we are? You see, uh, uh, in, in the past, uh, church is a very complicated system. We have made it complicated as human beings. So sometimes we take it for granted when we see people visiting us for three months, we call them princes, and then we're like, how, how, how? I did not give you any authority. Sometimes we send our children to check up on people because they visited us for three months and they say, I know the place, why are you checking up on me? So we want to solidify to know, are we together or we are not together? Take your time, no pressure. No pressure at all. Take your time and check us uh, uh, out. But if you feel this is where you belong, please do take the form at the back and let's know whether you are part of the royal house or not. But you are most welcome to still visit us if 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 you feel like no, I still I still need some time to really check you out. We we appreciate that. Please don't 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 run away. Stay with us and please do do visit. For those of you who feel this is the place where you want to be in September. We want to accept uh, and welcome new members. I, I believe that's all I have. Apostle, um, tea as usual will be served outside. I think at the end of September, we need to switch to something else. End of August, hospitality, it's now getting...
getting hot. So I think we will move to another beverage. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think uh, we will end with with August um, uh, handing out tea and, and do something else because it's getting warm. Can we all just stand on our feet this morning as we welcome Apostle back again? Okay, thank you, sir. So let's stand on our feet. Just uh, uh, look at your neighbor and say thank you for coming to the house of the Lord. Thank you for making time to come to the house of the Lord. And hold the hand of your neighbor as we close off the service today. I don't know what your neighbor came with this morning. It has been declared it is a victory service. I want to give you a minute just to say, Lord... The prayers of my neighbor, please answer. They just pray for your neighbor and say, all the prayer items you came with, manifest. Yeah, pray, pray for someone. Say, in those things you are trusting the Lord for, it is done. The Lord said, it is done. And you will see it. The Lord said, this is your victory service. You will come and testify. After seven days, you are coming. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And let's all declare together, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.